the world's moving from worrying about deflation risk to thinking of an inflation overshoot. That's because of the solid growth and the bounce in oil prices that we've seen. So last year, about 60% of the world economy had inflation below 1%. By 2017, that's going to be down to about 10%, which is a much more normal proportion. I think it's too early to worry about significant inflation, but of course, markets are binary and central banks are encouraging the fear. In September, you had the Bank of Japan promising to allow inflation to overshoot their 2% target. And now you have Fed Chair Yellen saying the economy will run hot in order to fix some of the structural damage. And to some degree, that's working already. You've got a rise in the participation rate over the past year. So the basic truth is that central banks fear deflation much more than inflation because then they lose control over policy. This pro-inflation bias gives an asymmetry to policy, but of course, slow rate hikes is not the same thing as no rate hikes. We think the Fed is gonna raise rates in December, probably twice more in 2017, but globally, it means that policy is gonna stay loose and is gonna stay very supportive of growth. Recent data from a number of countries, including the US, UK and China, suggest that inflation is on the rise. If confirmed, such a development could have some clear implications for asset allocation. This year has been dominated by low inflation, low earnings growth and general aversion to risk taking. For those concerned with portfolio allocation, an increase in inflation brings risk but also opportunity. An obvious risk is that long-term interest rates will have to rise to compensate for the renewed risk of inflation. At present, over and above the depressing effects of QE, long rates are low because investors have had little reason to expect inflation to erode away their returns. As things stand, we view this risk as muted, uh, given that expectations for higher inflation are not being aggressively priced in. Uh, the US numbers cited above suggest an increase in inflation, uh, but still merely to levels at the low end of historical experience that we've seen over the past decade. At the same time, QE remains a reality in many markets, notably Europe and Japan, and there is little chance of an abrupt change here. The appropriate response to this risk is to move fixed income exposure into shorter maturities. Absent earnings growth, the equity market is still not cheap. Considering the level of forward multiples combined with expectations for continued subdued earnings, at least for this year, leaves the conclusion that it is too soon to add equity to portfolios. Should there be upside surprises to earnings, a show me the money moment for markets, the view could change. It has been mooted uh, that given monetary policy, which is very supportive and declining event risk, the market somehow deserves to be on higher multiples. We disagree. The notion that the market can rally in a sustainable way from current levels uh, without a rise in earnings at the same time does not look realistic. For that reason, the only change this month is to advocate a shift to shorter duration as mentioned above. Thank you.